here. I just said to, to Tony, you're early. And she said, I don't have a watch. So there you go. So church starts at whatever time Tony is done playing the processional. And that's all you get. So um, the prelude, yeah. So, um, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Congregational Church of Brookfield. It is wonderful to have you all in worship with us here this morning. And please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Um, as we do gather here today, we get to celebrate World Communion Sunday, one with another. And so um, we are reminded today of all of the people in all of the places who are um, joining together in the sacrament alongside us, uh, no matter how far away in physicalness they may actually be. Um, I did want to share a few quick details about worship and the life of our church as we uh, begin worship this morning. Uh, the first, we remind you that as we're gathered together, we invite you to stay masked um, unless you are up here leading a part of worship so that people can actually hear what it is that you are saying. We will do our best uh, to keep one another safe and healthy as we join together today. Um, we will be celebrating communion on World Communion Sunday. Go figure. And as we celebrate communion, I will share with you as we head into that part of our worship service um, instructions so that you know how it is that we are going to go about celebrating communion in a way that um, makes some kind of sense for everyone who has gathered here in worship with us this morning. Um, if you have brought an offering or a gift with you today, um, we do invite you to uh, just swing by the Little White Church, which is on the table out in Brooks Hall. Um, that is where we have been collecting our offerings, and we thank you so much for your continued generosity and your support of our um, work and ministries here through the Congregational Church of Brookfield, um, especially during these strange times when there is so much up in the air and um, so much that is ever-changing. We thank you uh, very much for your continued care and support. Um, we are currently celebrating two services of worship. One at 8.30 in the morning, that's about a half hour long, and that is outside in our outdoor chapel. Um, I said this morning at 8.30 that we would stay out there potentially until Tony Sullivan's fingers turn blue because she is playing the piano for us, but we will see. We will keep you posted um, about when and how and where that service will be taking place. Um, and then this service where we gather inside our meeting house uh, for about 45 minutes to have an opportunity to be in worship um, inside one with another. Um, sign up links and information about all the things that are happening around this place go out in our weekly e-blast. It's an email, um, once a week email that goes out usually on Thursdays and it's an opportunity for us to keep you all uh, informed about what's happening. So if you do not have your email um, on that email list and you would like more information about um, what's going on around here, please let me know or email our office um, at office at uccb.org and we will make sure that you are getting that e-blast as well. Um, a couple of quick announcements about things happening after worship today. Um, one is that we have a visitors gathering. Um, we just had an opportunity to um, spend some time with a few of our visitors uh, after the 8.30 service. It was wonderful to have some time to connect and get to know people a little bit more. And we are looking forward to that opportunity after this service as well. Um, we are going to start uh, as close to about 11.15, 11.30 as possible, just right out in Brooks Hall, which is this room um, right next to us, for those of you who are interested in attending. And our fellowship committee has been wonderful. They have been setting up an opportunity for hospitality and connection out in our um, courtyard as well. So for those of you who would like to um, hop outside, spend a little bit of time connecting with one another, get a cup of coffee, a bottle of water, a little snack, um, you're more than welcome to head out there after worship and do that too. Um, are there any other announcements that I am missing this morning? Of course there are. Sally Markowitz, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wherever you want to go, go for it. Go here. You go there. Hi, I'm Sally Markowitz, and I'm one of the volunteer coordinators for the fair. Um, I have a couple. There's 13 days left until the fair. It's the 16th of October. We're, we still need some help. We do need a little bit more help in the thrift shop if anybody's available. We've got most of the other booths covered. Um, if you have any posters riding around in your car instead of going up. We could use them. <laughs> We're a little short on posters this year um, until I can get more made. So if you got some riding around in your car, on the seat, we could use a couple more today. Um, bakers, we need bake people to bake for both the coffee shop and the bake shop. 
Um, if you bake for the coffee shop, please wrap things individually. Um, we haven't done that in the past, but we're going to do that because of COVID. Bake shop, um, it's usually finger foods. Drop-offs the night before or the morning of. And the barn opens at 8, and this year the fair opens at 8.30. Um, I don't think that's been mentioned. <laughs> it says so on the posters. So um, if you have any questions, I guess I'm the... Sally? Yes. The person. For people who are here for the first time, yeah. you might want to tell them about the fair. Perhaps. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Yankee Fair and Barn Sale, and it's been happening for many, many years, like over 50. Um, we have a big barn sale, and in conjunction with that, we have quilts and food and garden stuff, and it's just a really magical day. The community comes together, and we come together as a community and have a blast welcoming our um, friends from Brookfield in the area. Did I explain that well enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When is it? The October 16th. It's yeah. October 16th. It's 13 days. 13 days until the Yankee Bear. <laughs> Around here, you may hear us mention that there are three high holy days at the Congregational Church of Brookfield, Christmas, Easter, and the Yankee Fair. And so um, the Yankee Fair is coming. And thank you very much for asking that question so that we could make sure that we described what it is that we are talking about when we are talking about putting up posters around town and welcoming people here to our church campus for our Yankee Fair. Are there any other announcements this morning? And friends, as we gather on this Communion Sunday, we remember how Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And as we gather, we light our peace candle to unite ourselves with others around the world who are seeking Christ's peace as well. And now let us take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Friends, as we gather this morning, we do so in a spirit of worship, and I would invite you now to join with me in our responsive call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins today. We gather today from many different places and walks of life. As we gather, we know there are others around the world who are doing the same. God calls us to come and dine this day with our brothers and sisters around the world. The food of God's spirit is good for the body, the mind, and the soul. It heals and mends, it strengthens and delights, comforts and transforms. For the food of God's spirit brings joy, wisdom, love, and peace to all who eat it. So God calls us now to turn aside from our busy ways, to open our minds and hearts to rest in the spirit and to join at the table together. Let us find rest and refreshment let us be inspired to love and serve beyond the human boundaries of time and place. Let us worship God together. And as we do, I would invite you now to join your spirits and your voices in our prayer of approach, which is adapted from the Sioux Great Spirit Prayer. So let us join in prayer. O oh, Great Spirit, whose voice we hear in the wind, whose breath gives life to all the world, we need your strength and wisdom. Let us walk in beauty, respect the things you have made, and sharpen our ears to hear your voice. Guide us to seek pure thoughts and act with the intention of helping others. Strengthen us, not so that we may be greater than anyone else, but so that we can serve with the strength of faith and character that can only come from you. Make us always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. We pray this in the name and spirit of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So the scripture this morning, I read it, um, and Paul was really, really angry when I read the whole scripture. You're getting the kind of kind version. <laughs> <laughs> Will you pray with me? Holy One, in our time this morning, bind us together with our siblings in faith around the world who sit and celebrate and find forgiveness and renewal at your table of grace. Remind us again of the things that bring us together and help us to hear through your word a sense of grace, direction, and call to practice and live our faith in a way that glorifies you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 17 to 33, selected verses. In this section, Paul addresses the people at the Church of Corinth about some of the issues he's getting word of in regard to their worship, including rumors of divisions among them, as well as a complaint about the lack of equity and the attitude of practice surrounding the Lord's Supper. Paul writes, First, I get this report on your divisiveness, competing with and criticizing each other. I'm reluctant to believe it, but there it is. And then I find that you bring your divisions to worship. Let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I received my instructions from the Master himself and passed them on to you. The Master Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. You will be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. Examine your motives. Test your heart. Come to this meal in holy Ah. So my friends, when you come together to the Lord's table, be reverent and courteous with one another. It is a spiritual meal, a love feast. May God add a blessing to our understanding of these words. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? <laughs> Holy One, in these moments, help us to be still and to know that you are God and that you are here present among us. Settle in us, if even just for these moments, all that is unsettled so that we might be able to truly open ourselves up, our hearts, our minds, our lives, to the words that you have for each of us today. Amen. Come here, come here, Jen, my husband said from the living room. And so I hurried out to meet him, and he had been reading an article 
about a group of people he had never heard of before. And he said, you have to hear about these people. It's an Aboriginal tribe from Australia called the Gugu Yimitir. And they navigate everything using cardinal directions with very little sense of ego. What <laughs> was my response? It means that they give directions to others based on actual directions, Jen. When they want to tell someone that something is behind them, they actually point through themselves as if they are invisible. The destination is most important. And when someone asks them how to get to the center of the village or elsewhere, they direct them with, you go this many paces northwest, and then you turn west. You go this many paces west, and then you turn in this direction over here. Wow, I responded with a little bit of trepidation because we both knew that at that moment that if I ever found myself in the midst of that culture, I would get eaten by wolves. <laughs> in my family and now on various mission trips with the youth fellowship groups, I think I have been voted least likely to get us where we need to go, at least without the little GPS lady at my side and even with her around, it's a bit of a crapshoot, I gotta admit. <laughs> I am least likely to be the person who could survive anywhere else in the world except inside my well-worn little bubble. But miracle of miracles, with some really good guides and teammates by my side, and with traditions that span distance and language, I have lived to tell of life in other lands. Because of my involvement with different groups and organizations and churches, I have sung in cathedrals in Canada and France and Italy. I have poured concrete with Dominican day laborers, slid down the snowy Andes mountains with little children on cardboard boxes, roofed a house in a remote part of Jamaica, and sat at table fellowship, literally breaking bread with community members in a Chilean shanty town. These places and experiences have all become a part of me. And every now and again on Sunday mornings, as I stand up here and I officiate communion, a few vivid images will pop into my mind. One is an image of a woman with cracked feet and worn out sandals, dancing and swaying to an upbeat hymn with a nursing baby at her chest. A woman giving thanks and praise to God that her baby has made it through another night and that she has had at least enough of something to make the food her baby needs to hopefully make it through another day as well. It is an image of a woman standing in front of me as we prepared to take communion in a church in one of the Haitian sugarcane workers' bates in the Dominican Republic. The other is an image of about a thousand people standing room only at the church in the center of La Romana in the Dominican Republic where I lived for a bit as a missionary. Everyone at the ready to receive communion together, bust in from the Vates and having walked or taken a caro from their home in the city, Haitians, Dominicans, North Americans joined together by this sacrament, by this table. Every now and again on a Sunday morning, I am transported back there and I am captured by two things. One, how at times I so easily take for granted the situation of my life, the food in my fridge, the roof over my head, the health care I have for my children, how by accident or gift of my birth here in the United States and in Connecticut to the particular family to which I was born, I have certain privileges that others could only dream of or imagine. And two, how a little bread and juice and some powerful words can connect us with others across the real divides of time and space and even the divide of language. By the time my son was about five years old, he could recite those well-known and well-worn powerful words, our words of institution, as I'm sure many of you can too. This is my body broken for you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And he could explain what they meant and why they were important, not because he was at church every Sunday, not because in his five-year-old mind he had talked theology, but because he had heard them 
and he had watched the big people around him react. My dad, who takes communion so seriously and prayerfully, others who smile joyously, others with tears in their eyes, others with praise on their lips. He knew, as I do, when I see your faces as we share communion together, that this meal has meaning that goes beyond just what I believe or you believe. It touches people deeply and connects people across division, whether we would like to admit it or not. As Sally said, Paul was not happy when he was writing this letter to the church at Corinth. He was writing to a community that was divided because of status and economics, because of who thought they should be in charge, whose candidacy they were going to dig in behind, or because of beliefs about how they were supposed to do things. And one of his answers to the division was to come to the table together in a way that made space and room for everyone. No one rejected, everyone invited to know Jesus' instruction, God's grace, the opportunity to be fed. Everyone invited to let their guard down for a moment and to share the stories that help people get to know them, where they're from, what their families are like, why they think the way they do, and open up to the stories and experiences and to learn from and with others as well. Everyone invited to join in this agape meal, this feast of God's generous love laid out as example in the life of Jesus. And Paul reminds us of the instructions of how it is that Jesus taught his disciples who gathered with him on that last night of his life to join together at the table, to share openly with one another, to remember. And so there are the powerful words not just the words that surround the bread of life and the cup of blessing, but those words, do this in remembrance of me. We come to the table today not only remembering Jesus' death, but remembering his life, his actions and example, the moments of healing and blessing, his protests and proclamations, his teaching about how to be in relationship with God and with other people, even those with whom we could never envision getting along. His willingness to stand strong for what he believed and what he believed it was right to fight for. His extravagant love, even unto his last breath. Do this in remembrance of me. Today, we celebrate World Communion Sunday, a celebration established in the 1930s and made official by the Council of Churches in 1940, some 80 plus years ago now. And as we gather, we remember others around the world who are celebrating this agape meal, this love feast. Perhaps they are celebrating a little bit differently with things like corn tortillas and coconut milk or sweet crackers and sour wine as we did in the DR. But no matter what elements we use, we are reminded of our connection and we are invited. As difficult as it may be at times in our lives, we are invited to cross the chasms of human-made divisions, to join together in peace at this table, and to live our everyday lives beyond the walls of this place, following the example of the one who invites us. Do this in remembrance of me. May it be so. Amen.
we have now an opportunity to gather those uh, people, places, situations that are on our hearts and on our minds for reason of prayer, both for reason of concern and reason of joy. And as we do so, I would invite your prayers uh, as we look out at our world for our country's leaders that they will find wisdom and patience and the ability to communicate well as they move forward with important decisions that need to be made in the days to come. And I would invite your prayers for God's creation, too, especially the places that are recovering from natural disasters um, in hopes that we will all do what is right and good and are striving to be the best stewards we can of everything that God has given us. Um, we do have a few prayers that people have specifically requested um, as we head into this week. And so I would invite your prayers to surround Maisie, who is recovering from an emergency appendectomy, and prayers for her parents that they can catch up on much lost sleep over this last week. Uh, for Sandy and Katie and Tom and Lynn, who are um, struggling with cancer, some undergoing treatments and others making decisions about what the next best steps are. And for Tim and a few others who have just been diagnosed with cancer as well. Um, we are praying today for Mary, who is recovering from a broken ankle. Um, Mary headed in for a little bit of surgery this past week and is heading for full reconstructive surgery this coming Friday. So um, we lift her up and for Alex as well as he um, accompanies her through this journey of surgery and recovery on the other side. And one of uh, mine and Bryn's colleagues, Amanda, has asked for us for prayers for her church. Um, over this last week, they suffered multiple losses of dear ones, and so they are accompanying one another through a time of grief and loss. And so we pray for them and for their ch church community and family. Um, by way of joy, uh, we continue to uh, lift up Pastor Bryn and her sabbatical. Uh, she will be back to us in the middle of November, but hopefully she is getting some time for rest and renewal um, as she is taking some time away from this place. Um, we are praying uh, prayers of joy for the beginning of our youth group and confirmation programs again as we head into this fall. Uh, for Dan and Claire, who I had the honor of officiating, whose wedding I had the honor of officiating yesterday at the Congregational Church in Essex. Um, and for Pastor Laura and her church in Kensington as we celebrate her installation as their settled pastor there uh, this afternoon. Um, and of course, we lift up the great joy of our special music today for our great bell players. It was wonderful to have you guys back and to hear you all uh, for Tony and her great leadership of that program. And um, we have another treat coming for you a little bit later in the form of Patty and Patrick Taylor, who will be sharing with us some music during communion as well. So we thank you all so much for sharing your gifts with us so generously. Um, and I know that uh, some of you come with other prayers, thoughts, joys, and concerns on your hearts as well this day. Um, so I will move out among you, uh, and I ask for whom else shall we be in prayer? Very quiet day today. <laughs> Leslie. Prayers for Tom, Colleen, and Mark. Prayers for Tom, Colleen, and Mark today. Just a, a joy I have my dad is visiting from Tennessee today. It's so wonderful to have you with us. It's a great opportunity right now on, uh, as, as things are opening up a little bit more to have an opportunity to connect and reconnect in person with those who are dear to us. So welcome Patty's dad. <laughs> there are other names or situations that should be lifted up for reason of prayer. Great right, friends, and let us join our hearts and our souls together in the spirit of prayer this day. God, we are grateful. We are grateful that by blessing or accident of our birth or 
are landing here somewhere around Brookfield that we have come to be together one with another in this space and in this sacred place. This place where we are able to gather to make connections, to get to know one another a bit better, to share our gifts and skills, to gather together around the table of grace. God, as we prayed earlier, we pray that you would strengthen us as we gather together, not so that we might be greater than anyone else, but so that we can serve you. Serve you with a strength of faith and character that you provide. Serve you following the example and guidance of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you that as we do come together, that there is so much that we receive um, from one another and from you in this place. We thank you for grace, for forgiveness, for openness, for connection. We thank you for love. And so, God, as we think about those things, we do realize that there are some whom we love deeply who are lying heavily on our hearts this day. We have lifted up names for reasons of prayer today, God, and we know that you hear not only those, but those that lie in the silence of our hearts. And so we pray that as we have lifted up these names, that you would surround these dear ones of ours with your love and your care, with your strength and your peace, with your guidance and your wisdom, with the things that you know they need far better than we could ever know or identify. And God, we thank you for the joys that we are able to celebrate together today, too. For the joy of new programs, for the joy of new ministry, for the joy of new life and new love that we celebrate today. And God, we thank you for the joy of sharing our gifts and the gift of music that speaks to our hearts oftentimes when words even may not be able to. And so God, we pray that as we continue on in our worship here today, and especially as we go out into the world, that you would remind us of the ways that we are bound together, the ways that we are united with others across the human-made divisions of time and space and language and all the things that we use to other people. We pray that you would help us to remember that in you we have so much and that in you, we can do so much as well. So help us to use our gifts the best way possible to serve your world and to bring us a step closer to your kingdom as well. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So friends, we are invited today to this table of grace. As we are invited here, we remember how Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. And so we receive those promises. We hear them and we receive them knowing that there are others who are coming from all over, from the north, the south, the east, and the west to join together across those distances, across that time, at this table of grace. And so friends, know that you are all invited to join at this table too. That you, we come not because we must, but because we may. So come to know the presence of the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread and cup. As we come today, we do remember those words, those powerful words that Jesus spoke to his disciples as they gathered on that last night of his life. As they gathered together, he took bread, and giving thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said to them, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so 
in remembrance of me. And we remember how in the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and sharing it with them. He said, take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of the new covenant. Pour it out for love of you. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? Holy One, we thank you. We thank you for these humble gifts, the grain of the earth and the fruit of the vine. We thank you for the invitation to gather united one with another in this place and with others around the world on this special day. And God, we thank you for all that this meal means for us, for renewal and refreshment in mind and body and spirit, for your grace, your forgiveness, for your unconditional and unending love. And so now, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come upon these gifts and upon us. Transform them and us that they may be so much more than you see before you today. Transform us so that we might go out and be your best people for this world. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So friends, as we accept the invitation and as we gather at this table of grace today, there are of course some instructions about how that works well um, in the midst of these times. And so we are going to invite you to come forward um, using the center aisle and then returning to your seats along the side aisles. Um, there will be a couple of stations set up. I have some deacons who will be um, helping to distribute the elements today. And so um, you can come either to the right or the left. Please grab your elements and then bring them back to your seat with you. As soon as everyone has received the bread and the cup, we will invite everyone to take communion together, one with another in this place. Um, everything is recyclable, so we ask that at the end of worship you find one of our blue bins and put all of your things in them as well. Um, and I think that, it, oh, and if you need or would prefer to be served in your seat, please just raise a hand and we will make sure that we get elements out to you as well. So I would invite our deacons to come forward at this time. <clears throat>
Thank you so much, Patty and Patrick. That was beautiful. <laughs> so friends, now it is time to make some joyous noise with our elements. So uh, let us take together the bread of life and the cup of blessing. section going at the end of communion these days. It's a great thing. <laughs> so friends, as we have joined at the table, we now have an opportunity to give thanks to God and to bless one another before we sing our final hymn and head our way out into this world to live our faith. So will you join with me in our response of thanksgiving and blessing that is printed in your bulletins? God has called us to this feast with others around the world. We thank God for inviting and nourishing us. Go from this table into the world with a daring and tender love. We go out looking with compassion on the world's needs. Go from this table into the world to speak the truth of God's love and care for all. Renewed and refreshed, may we go out to serve with joy. And now, friends, I would invite you to stand as you are able and join with us in singing our closing hymn, When in Awe of God's Creation. between and among us until we meet again. The peace of Christ be with you all. <laughs>